Oh, this is Red Magic 11 Pro Plus, world first to have a liquid cooling for phone. That's so cool. Air cooling plus liquid cooling. Wow. It's got so many upgrades this time. A heat vent, air inlet, air outlet, and a headphone jack. Let's compare the performance with and without liquid cooling. Let's run the benchmarks. Is it waterproof? I just put it in water. Ding, 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 ding. That's the difference between waterproof and non-waterproof. This generation isn't waterproof. Come on, it won't go black while running, will it? This 11 Pro Plus, there's no bubbles inside, proving it's still waterproof. If you put this in, it should bubble up. Okay, we're done. The previous generation scored 3.14 million, and this one scored over 4 million. It's incredible, my goodness. Is there any phone with higher benchmarks now? Only this generation, besides better cooling and performance, has also been upgraded in several other areas. Here's the fingerprint sensor. The previous generation's optical fingerprint sensor has been replaced with an ultrasonic one. Ultrasonic fingerprint unlocking allows you to unlock the phone even with wet hands. Turn it off by mistake, then turn it on and heat it up. Let's take it apart. Everyone's probably wondering, can this phone be restored to waterproofness after being disassembled? All we need to do is buy the original waterproof adhesive. It's actually not that difficult, it just depends on your interest. Wow. Ding, 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 ding. This, all around, is the original waterproof adhesive. Restoring the original waterproofing shouldn't be a problem. Okay, now we've removed the back glass. Oh my goodness. Doesn't it look even cooler now? So cool. It should still be the same. It's just a sticker. What's underneath the sticker? Wow. The sticker comes off perfectly, revealing the water cooling area is incredibly large. It looks even better without the sticker. Look, isn't that sticker a bit redundant? It completely obscures the beauty of the phone. That's what cool is, right? During our final assembly, we almost obscured it. Doesn't it look even cooler this way? Wow, so cool. Uh, come on, let's continue disassembling. This is, oh, it's the same as the previous design. The LED panel comes off directly, unlike the previous generation. It's a contact type design. The flash and top microphone are all integrated. This is the complete cooling system. This would be difficult to modify in other phones. Oh, this can be modified separately. This modification is possible. It can be separated. Let's separate it. This one needs alcohol to remove. It's glued too tightly. Okay, the air cooling and water cooling are separate. This one is air cooling, and this one relies on this cable for air cooling. The air cooling is separate. And these two contacts are for wireless charging. The water circulation motor below. Come on, let's put it in separately. Put it in separately, and turn it on. See? It still circulates. This modification is very easy. We just need to remove the wireless charging part, separately. Okay, this is the wireless charging part. Let's remove it separately. What's left is the water cooling part. This accessory can be purchased separately, and if we retrofit it into another phone, we just need to connect two power supplies. Let's measure the voltage of these two power supplies. Okay, turn on the phone and the voltage will show up. Let's see what it is. Wow, how can it shock someone? It can shock me? Are you kidding me? I need to keep this pin away. Oh my God, no wonder it can't be electrocuted. 73 volts. People perceive voltage as 330 volts. 36 volts, that's a bit exaggerated. This modification is undoubtedly more difficult. It's boosting the battery voltage. The battery is about 4.5 volts and it needs to be boosted to over 70 volts to drive this cycle. Oh, let's disconnect the power first. Let's open it up and see how the Boost circuitry is designed. Okay, this speaker. From my visual observation, I suspect the boost is being done by the charging port. Why? Because if the motherboard were boosting the voltage, it would be nearly impossible for a single cable to deliver over 70 volts to this point. Okay, now let's remove the shielding and see where we suspect the Boost circuitry is, right? Okay, we've removed it. Based on our empirical observations, this part is the entire boost circuitry. This is the chip responsible for boosting the voltage, the boost inductor. We've done some research and found that it's a liquid cooling solution for a piezoelectric micropump and its working principle. 